Hey guys, what's up? It's Cole. The Moogle Treasure Trove, the hunt for the 10th anniversary tombstone has finally arrived and with pretty freaking sweet rewards, we are going to be going over the best methods to farm your tombstones as quick as possible. Out the gate, I'm going to say that there are a bunch of different methods that I do think are viable, but we're going to be going through them one by one. First up is going to be the fastest method that I found for just pure farming them, and it is going to be spamming P1S normal. You're going to be able to find party finder groups, and it's usually going to be one tank and then seven DPS. The goal of this is literally to burn down the boss as quickly as possible, and you can get it within a pretty reasonable time frame, like three-ish minutes kind of sort of it really depends on the group i'm not gonna lie if you have a lot of people that aren't really doing their rotation correctly that aren't using food it can take a bit longer but uh generally speaking three-ish minutes for them so that's gonna land you at roughly one moogle tombstone per minute roughly alliance raids i'm not gonna lie will take a lot longer but we're gonna be looking at a bunch of them that are gonna give you up to 14 tombstones especially if you're gonna be doing the hardest ones that like capstone third installment for each expansion and so that's gonna be just just really a way to farm out a ton of different glamours like say you like the euphrasine glamours i think that this would probably be the best time for you to actually get into that alliance raid and just grind it out get your glamours get 14 tombstones per that's going to be a very consistent method of getting them now do i think you're going to be clearing euphrasine in 14 minutes the same as like p1s is one tombstone per minute i i respectfully don't think so i think that it will probably take you 20 ish 20 let's be honest 20 ish to 30 ish minutes depending on the group but if you want those glamours better no better time now this is going to be a little controversial to say especially if you already have the pvp rewards in which case i don't really know if i'd recommend this unless you really do enjoy pvp which a lot of people do i think it's really cool it's a definitely shake up in gameplay but it is going to be not crystalline conflict that is not on the list of pvp stuff that you can get it but we're talking about the sealed rock the fields of glory onzel hekai night aka Danshing nadam and hidden gorge so basically all of those larger scale pvp maps those are going to be giving you six tombstones for losing or 10 for winning now do i think that these are going to be cleared in 10 minutes eh, no probably not it's going to probably go over that so again is it the most efficient method no but if you enjoy PvP and or you want the PvP rewards, I think that it is absolutely fantastic. Now another thing is let's say that you want to level up an alt job, especially through the Endwalker content. This is probably going to be one of the most rewarding times to do it. So you are having the Tower of Zot, the Tower of Babel, Vanispatic, Jesus, Hyperborea, the Ada Scope, and not so much the Dead Ends because that's level 90. You're not leveling at that point. But you have the full suite of Endwalker leveling dungeons that you can go through. And honestly, I, I think that that's just absolutely kind of magical. But thinking about, oh my god, if I leveled an alt, I could get eight tombstones per. Again, let's set expectations really clear. I'd consider clearing a leveling dungeon with a group of random people in like... 15 minutes pretty decent i'm not gonna lie i'd call that pretty decent even if you are like dpsing hard on healer it really depends on your team but if you're just looking to like level an alt job and get moogle tombstones this is absolutely amazing like it is very hard to compete with that efficiency it's really a great time to level alt jobs so if you haven't considered it maybe consider it and if you are looking at doing it just dive right in now let's say that you want something totally out of the box something that you're not necessarily going to get a normal recommendation from me from look at doing the unreal trial because the unreal trial the containment bay z1t9 which is going to be a better known as zervan uh well, Zervan Unreal, I was almost saying extreme, skip sword disband, um, but that is going to land you 8 tombstones per, and so really guys, that is going to be like my final recommendation, if you're looking at doing the Unreal Trials anyhow, for those gold leaves for that fox, like, I, I think that that's again, pretty easy way to get 8 if you're already doing it. Talking about the methods, I kind of want to cap it off by saying, unfortunately, there really is no blue mage method that I really see in here that I could really recommend. Um, I have thought maybe the ported deku mana could be like that it looks potentially like it but um in reality that is just not a method that i really feel super comfortable recommending especially when we do have p1s being able to be downed by a competent team of people pretty quick especially if you use potions it's really gonna go down pretty good but in general as you can see if you're leveling alt jobs you have something if you want to dabble in pvp you have something if you want to go into alliance raids and do something 
or I mean farm glamour, you have that. And honestly, a lot of these things do correlate strongly with tombstone farming. So if you're farming, say, poetics for something, or maybe you're grinding out tomes for the relic, outside of hunt method, because the hunt methods do not give you these tombstones. But, I mean, these Moogle tombstones, sorry, they're so made for tombstones these days, guys. But... It, aside from that, if you're grinding out tombstones, you are going to naturally be finding a lot of these. Like, if you just do your dailies, you will probably happen across a ton of these. I'm going to close off the video by going super quickly over the rewards. And so the two unique uh, rewards from this event are going to be the 10-year anniversary fairy Mers kit. So if you're using your adventurer's plate, that is going to be very important. And if you haven't set up your adventurer plate, come on, guys. <laughs> it's been out for a bit. It's fun. It's not that bad, guys. I see so many default portraits, and sometimes I'm guilty of that. The next one is going to be the Fat Cat Parasol. For obvious reasons, this is iconic. And so, I, how to say it? This is going to be one that you probably don't want to miss. And so, I know a lot of people are just, like, unsubscribed right now. Uh, but you know what? The Fat Cat Parasol, I know that I personally would regret it if I didn't get it. But if you guys don't want to do it, obviously you don't need to. Don't don't think too much about it. That's okay if you don't want to. But I can say I personally regret it because it is a Fat Cat Parasol. And it goes, obviously, with the Fat Cat Glamour that has been in the shop, which I think is also incredible. In addition to that, you can get any of the Stormwolf mounts, which is going to be super cool especially if you didn't farm out the storm wolf, storm blood giant wolf mount i think that this would be a great opportunity to farm it out and get some of these things you also have a bunch of items like modern aesthetics both ways that you can sell on the market board sky blue parasol uh, ballroom etiquette that you can uh sell on there like the insufficient petticoats or the uncouth like congratulations Probably uncouth congratulations, my apologies. And so in reality, I think that this is one of the most rewarding local tombstone events we have ever had. And so I really do recommend people checking it out. Even if you just are into housing, like if you look at some of the housing items that they have for offer, a lot of these are really good housing items. Like these are really amazing. Like the wooden slat partitions make a cool effect. The like tech startup chair with the, the Paisa one is really cool. I'm just such a fan of all of this, honestly. Like, this is truly a reward set that I can do nothing but compliment. Now, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Now we're at the end of the video, and I know that most people have gotten to this point are pretty interested in, or probably want to hear it. I'm I'm really sorry about being really sparse here. I, I'm not going to lie. The past year has been really tough on me. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to get into it here, but... I do owe everyone an apology. I haven't met my own standards. I haven't met your standards. I know I haven't. I know that I failed you. Um, I have not been the best person that I could be, and I do genuinely apologize. I am. I will do better. I I really want to do better. I love this community, and I I have failed you, and I'm really sorry. And I will I will try and do better. By this point, I expected my website to be out and fully integrated with this channel. Um, I had expected to do collaborations with a whole lot of people. Um, I dropped the ball, and I'm sorry. Anyhow, I I do hope that you do enjoy this Moogle Tombstone event. I really do genuinely think that this has so many amazing rewards and that everyone should really check into it. Um, but with that, I am not going to get into the details of that unless you guys like specifically say that, yes, you want to hear some of my stuff, but... Um, Basically, I just apologize, and I, I really do mean it. I am sorry. 